record. All right. Good evening, everybody. It's uh, 7 o'clock with David and Michael, and uh, it is March 19th. And so David and I uh, have uh, both been kind of battling some cold and flus. And then David just had his big birthday. I and did. To Vegas. So why don't you catch a step on that real quick? Yeah, that was great. Thank you for asking. It was great because both my sons, Kyle is 34, Connor is 24. Uh, my birthday was actually in January and they gave me the present in January. They said, we're taking you to Las Vegas. And so they picked out the weekend in March, the 8th, 9th and 10th, I believe it was a week ago. And um, gosh, it was fantastic because as a parent, and I know, Michael, you are not a parent yet, but I'm sure you will be someday. And we've talked about in the past, your mom and your dad and your brother and just different people that we've referenced. But it, one of the greatest things about it is not only Vegas, but it was just this concept of don't you not do anything, it's just show up at the airport. And so it was really, everything was planned from the hotel to the airplane or to the flight rather, to where we're going to dinner. And, you know, they said you can basically bring some money for gambling, but everything else is covered. That's so awesome. it, was, it was really, really cool. We had a really great time and, and we saw a show, we saw a Cirque du Soleil show, which was great. Oh. Uh, two or three great meals, uh, did quite a bit of gambling. I was very fortunate. I'm not a huge gambler, but I, I do like to spend some time on the craps table. And uh, I, I was up quite a bit the first night, which was great because then after that, I ended up giving some back to the bank, but walked home with money, which is always great when you're in uh, Vegas or Reno. So, but it was really good. But I, I think just, it was really emotional for me just because I think about, it seems like I was just changing these guys' diapers and then here they are, you know, catering my every whim on a trip to Vegas for my birthday. So it was just, it was very, very special and, and something that I won't, won't soon forget. So it was really neat. Pretty soon they'll be changing your diapers. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you got a long ways to go. That's really cool though. And uh, you know, what a way for your sons to step up and treat you like that. That's yeah. Really cool. Yeah. I think you taught them well. Yeah, exactly. And, and you <laughs> and I have talked about it too, the relationship with, with, your, you know, in this case, my children, I, I consider you like one of my sons, as you know, uh, but also your folks and your folks' folks and the different generations of people. And it's just interesting how the relationships and the interaction can go from phenomenal to not so phenomenal to everywhere in between, just depending on, on the, the players. And um, I think, for instance, I have Dana, my wife that passed away, has a daughter that, um, uh, was from her, her first husband and she and I just don't talk that much. It's the way it is. I mean, it's just like, there's nothing new about it. It's just something that she just chose not to necessarily, she has her own father and, and Dana, my wife, her mother passed away. Uh, and so it's too bad, but you just, you learn to really get very accepting. I had a uh, unfortunate situation about three weeks ago. Now it's 80 degrees in Seattle today. And only three weeks ago, there was a foot of snow. You know, so it's had this huge transition. And um, I was going down the road and, and pretty careful driver and hit some ice. And, and I started sliding. I went, oh, man. And I rear-ended a guy and really no damage to him, but it kind of crunched my front bumper. And so I just took it into the repair shop. They had it for three days earlier this week and um, cost me $1,000 for the deductible. And then they fixed it. But the reason I bring it up is because I, I just remember thinking, I, I can't do anything about this. Don't, don't even think about getting upset. What's done is done. You need to get it fixed. And, and that's why sometimes our relationships and all these other things, we all know people, hopefully not Michael and David, but we all know people who stress and, and go wring their hands over things. And you can't do anything about it. Not that point. It's just a lot of waste of energy. That's how I felt about that. I just get the car fixed. Now it's fixed and I'm fine. So. Anyway, but yeah, so that was, that was it's definitely hard though when you're in that moment to pull yourself out and be like, it's okay. Mm -hmm. it's, mother nature sometimes does that. It's out of my control. Exactly. And, I mean, how often do we get a foot of snow in Seattle? So, yeah, exactly. I mean, it's every couple of years. Thank goodness. Mm -hmm. And, you know, thank goodness we're not in North Dakota or, you know, Montreal or somewhere. So, you know, it's, it's, I'm very thankful where I live and, it's lucky we don't have these huge epic wind and rain and snow and you know it's pretty mild here thank goodness we yes. do get a lot of rain which most people whine about but yeah um, you know you either learn to accept it or learn to hate it so <laughs> yeah. yeah and you're right because I watch enough of the like a weather channel or something to see that the northwest whether it be Bellingham or Seattle, Issaquah, where I live, 
uh, we're very fortunate. And there just aren't a lot of the natural disasters that happen. I know there's big flooding going on in Nebraska right now or in the Midwest. We're just very lucky. We really are. Yeah. Thank goodness for being uh, born in this area. So Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Well, tell me, nice. give me, the, give me the Michael James update for the, uh, I know it's been a bit, since, like I said, a few little little hurdles you and I had to overcome to uh, getting sick or, or other things going on. But, yeah. uh, and, and I think we've made it clear to people we want to be on this, uh, this Michael and David show slash podcast pretty much every week, maybe every 10 days. But uh, give me your update for the last week or two. Yeah. So last two weeks, um, you know, lots happened, like a lot of bigger meetings, a lot of new consultants I've been installing and kind of training and getting to get referrals sent into the program. And uh, I've been able to create a lot of content through a program like this where I'm able to capture really high definition video and audio. Mm. And, and then I've embedded those videos into my website and my YouTube so I can share them to my social and uh, they're on my Facebook and you know, all that stuff, LinkedIn. And uh, What I've done is I've really defined those three groups through video. And so I've simplified it. So hopefully it'll, it's, it's very simplified. So almost anyone can get it. And so if you're, you know, in the business realm and you watch these three videos, uh, the idea is that you'd be able to then figure out how to be someone that refers business, someone that consults business in our network, or someone that's providing professional services. So, you know, you can be someone off the street and it's really who you know, and you can be a real partner. So I've really simplified it into those kinds of ways. So almost anyone uh, I'm training now, today I trained a friend from college and I was able to train him on my LinkedIn daily activities. And so I showed him my Excel sheet, my emailer documents on, you know, how I reach out cold emails and follow up emails and then set, you know, appointments through Google Calendar. And then what I did is I trained him to set my appointments for me. So mm -hmm. he's, he's going to be managing my Google Calendar. And what I did is I trained him through LinkedIn to set a uh, fresh conversations and meetings for me and he's going to be a referral partner for me and he's going to make really good money really quick. Nice. So he's just going to pump out as many meetings and you know, my conversion rates over 95% right now. So if I get someone on the phone for some sort of service, we're signing a contract mm -hmm. and some fees and a consulting partner is getting paid and then a growth partner is getting paid. So um, you know, this guy is going to turn into a referral source and just pump my LinkedIn and build my list for me. And, you know, he'll get referrals like I've set up with many other people. So it was just a great example because he didn't know anything about LinkedIn. And I was able to screen capture everything in an hour. Wow. Share the YouTube video link privately through a link. Mm -hmm. and watch and relearn and educate himself again at any time and then take the three documents the word documents and the excel sheet and then he can duplicate my model and start this and make money nice oh that's great that was really fun because he was a, a good friend from college uh you know him and his wife has been married for a few years i got to see him again this year they're uh, pregnant actually and expecting a baby in like oh, august nice. And so it's a little baby girl they just found out. And so, you know, if I can help them, that'd be a really cool, you know, I'd, I'd personally feel that and that'd be really cool. So that was a great little story. Oh, excellent. Excellent. And what's kind of been up for you and how have you been well, doing with it? Thanks for uh, asking. Uh, the, um, probably the one thing, there was a number of other things too. With, uh, I'm trying to think I, I had that trip to Vegas, as I mentioned, and then last week. I didn't think I had to talk last week, but I've uh, got a couple coming up week next week and week after but really the one thing that i always have four or five big areas i'm working on the promoting the speaking business uh promoting my coaching practice um working on my online courses which we're gonna i'm gonna talk to you about briefly tonight about the kajabi platform it's just sort of a little educational piece and that right. got you down for fear of reaching out which is one of the things we talked about in our last um conversation and um there's been a couple of the, some group coaching, but really one of the ones I was working on is a called a six word book publishing. It's a series of books and they're 
they're, they're not huge. They're maybe 80 pages and it's about 10,000 words, something like that, but it's still a lot of words. And it's called six word book series. And mine is everything is the, the chapter titles, the course titles are six words each. And then the body is about a hundred words, you know, which we talk about each concept and they call it snackable chunks of wisdom. So I put together the whole manuscript and I think the name I was, was happiness starts with gratitude and appreciation. So anything six words anyway. And so I've been working on it probably since the last time you and I talked and just try not get overwhelmed by the project. Anytime you work on a book, it's I've done books in the past and it's, it's a big job and it's just better to do pieces today and then put it away and do some more tomorrow. And is it the, the, chunk, the overall size, the enormity of it sometimes will kind of blow you away. Mm-hmm. So I finally got it done and um, turned it in. I was pretty happy with it. And, but in dealing with the publisher and it, it's going to sound like I'm mad at them. I'm really not, but, but I got a, got this week and a half of work on this and I got a call from today. We talked about it. Essentially half of the manuscript I have to redo, you know, and well, you didn't really get, you didn't really zero in here. And I think, my message to the hopefully soon to be many followers of David and Michael will be in this particular arena is it takes a long time. It's a, it's a sanding process or building the sculpture. You don't hit one thing and all the stone falls away. You keep chipping away at the rock. And I just, when I got off the phone today, I just went, Oh man, maybe I shouldn't even do it. And I thought, no, no, no. And I'll just take, so that means half is not good. Half is good. So take the half that's good and build on this and so on. But it just reminded me so much of this concept for me. And I know for Michael, and again, hopefully people following you and me is that really anything of value you have in your life, you generally have to work for. Oh yeah. And things that come easy, for whatever reason, don't have as much value and sometimes are, are taken too lightly. And I look at knowing as long as I've known you and you've known me, we've gone down the road on a lot of things where it finally worked out, but it was, it was kind of a long journey. So that, that whole thing for me was um, a little frustrating, but, but again, I'll just, uh, you know, come back at it with a fresh set of eyes tomorrow or the next day and start chipping away again. And maybe there, maybe it's a second or third or fourth draft, but uh when I looked down and saw the word count, you know, 10,000 words, <laughs> I've written a lot of words and, you know, and apparently a lot of it wasn't up to speed or what they wanted. So anyway, so that's been, that's probably been the number one project in my mind. So hmm. anyway, so could, um, if you really want to get depressed, go and uh, Google how many times J.K. Rowling's oh. re-edited oh, Harry, oh, the first Harry Potter. Potter before it got published. Oh, entry. Oh, that's, that, that would be a good idea. Oh God! You yeah. think, you you think a hundred? She did a hundred and fifty pitches before someone picked that up and published that book. Yeah, that's always good to hear because we forget that. <laughs> you think of J.K. Rowling who used to be homeless or didn't have much money at one point, and now she's Ooh, you know, multi million, whatever it might be. Yeah, but yeah, that's always, yeah, it's always reassuring to hear that because it reminds you if at first you don't succeed, you know, and, and, and keep trying and stuff. Too. I mean, for you, if if it would have shown up first try, like exactly. How does that happen? Like, yeah. you know, you got, I mean, yeah, you're going to have to put a few tries at it. Yeah. Like, you know, on, if you look at, um, you know, someone designing a t-shirt or a watch or, mm-hmm. you know, shoes, like think of how many iterations it goes before they end yeah. up with something that's like Agreed. palatable. And, um, you know, so like my concept uh, today, some illustrator from Seattle completely ripped and ragged on my you know website because it I mean I know what it looks like it looks very you know uh, childish it's not in my mind what I want it to be it's just I'm not an artist Mm -hmm. so how do you iterate that to someone that's extremely creative and talented that designs Starbucks and bring them into a new concept that's not there right and so that's where I've you know so there was a little bit of like checking on both ends and saying hey this is this is not that and you know let's play with this here like what would you how would you recommend how would you make this look right and and I got a lot of data out of that so we're gonna meet later this week and you know that guy's gonna get paid some money and hopefully get you know some really heavy work in our network for some future stuff so um but like for me I've had 5,000 people look at this thing and like oh it makes sense and then uh, it's okay but then you know today some guy just rips me a new one and I needed to hear it. I knew yeah. it. 
just I need well, someone. To play. I think it always goes with the it sort of goes with the the process or goes as part of the uh, whatever you want to call it. The uh, one of the I don't know if I've put it posted yet, but I think next week's video or the one after is is dogs don't chase uh, parked cars. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and it's true and so let's let's take let's attack michael james you know he's got this he's got whatever and um and, and so it's almost like if there isn't somebody doesn't like what you're doing you're probably not doing as good as you can you know and it's just yeah, always one of those i love being especially with this thing mm -hmm. i want everybody's like to rip it up because i want to be presenting the best possible thing like I want it to look like Microsoft. I want to perform better than Windows. Like, right? I want to build a shoe that's better than the Nike last, you know, whatever they built. So, exactly. Um, yeah, I want that to be like a very user friendly experience. Mm -hmm. And it's very understandable what's going on because it's a big concept, but you need to understand it like. 30 seconds. <laughs> well, I also think it's, it, there's an important factor as well is this concept of it's impossible to please everybody. You yeah. know, it's, no, it's it's almost, definitely yeah. can't, but it's, it's just yeah. taking a lot of data and going, Oh, okay. And morphing it to those somewhat audiences. Like, right. yeah, I mean, I, I understand this guy is one audience of a bunch, but yeah, I mean, I'm getting, I'm trying, yeah, I agree on certain ideas of his, and I'm like, yeah, let's do that. Like, mm -hmm. I'm totally on board. It's just like, you know, can, you know. Well, I and I think. There's an artist, and I work with tons of graphic people, and I build right. beautiful stuff all day, but I can't draw out this as, like, the mm -hmm. way I'm weird. It's been I think another thing sometimes, too, is, is, and I don't mean to judge people, but I always like to consider the source. Is this a guy that knows what he's talking about? Yeah. And or is this somebody who just criticizes everybody and really has no standing? And mm -hmm. it's like I learned once: if you want to get, if you have, if you're looking for a certain kind of result, find somebody who's getting the results you want, and then do what they do. Do you right. validate what he said, and mm -hmm. do you think of him as a you know equal? And do you exactly. value this somebody who's in a position? And you know, yeah, and I mean, so far, like he explained who he was and what he's done. And I was like, okay, well, I'm you know I'm willing to listen and. What he said was, you know, he was passionate. It wasn't like, you're losing, you're a dumbass. It was like, dude, this is amazing. But like, I think you could do this a lot cleaner. This is very entry level. And there's a corporate level to make this, which is what I want to get it to. But I just have not met that corporate level, whatever vision. And he explained it very well. He was, you know, it seems harsh to someone that's in their creation process and their little world, and then someone goes, bang, <laughs> that's wrong, dummy. Right. Um, it wasn't like that, but it, it stops you in your track, and and you go, oh, okay, yeah. I, right. Yep, I, I agree to some of that. Uh, yeah, 80% of that is gold. Like, let's, mm -hmm. okay. So and I, I value a lot of it does, again, depend on everybody that tells me anything. So, yeah. Yeah. And I do think it, I, I just think it's such an important, it's not to judge, but just to think about. To validate. Yeah, and what, what position that they come from, somebody said, I'm, I'm not a big fan of the word advice, but somebody once said, never take advice from somebody that isn't in a position that you want to be. You know, I've had people, I, I get a lot of my speaking, you need to be doing this, this, as somebody who's never done a speech in their life. You've mm -hmm. never spoken in front of a group, and then you need to be doing this, this, and this, and I just, yeah. okay, and how's that work for you? Oh, you, you're not a speaker? Oh, okay. Well, here, let me turn you loose up there, watch it burn it up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah we'll, we'll have you get up there too. Put your money where your mouth is, homie. <laughs> well, let's. I love. Let's, I love putting people in their places. Uh, so so, so good. true. Well, let's let's uh, give the, uh, the followers, the viewers, a little bit on. Um, I'm okay. going to talk about the Kajabi online platform, and you're going to talk about the fear of reaching out, and we'll we'll leave them with something next week for next week's yeah. uh, talk. Do uh, you want to start about the fear of reaching out? Yeah, sure. So, you know, something uh, for myself, like I, I did this test a long time ago called the Briggs-Meyer test. And it's like a personality oh, yeah. business, yeah. like for business and personality and relationships and all this stuff. And I believe if I remember right, I'm an ENSJ, mm. and, you know, like you're critical thinker, you like to schedule things, you're, you know, uh, there, I forget certain things at the moment, but anyways, um, as far as 
um, you know, people getting to interact with you and you get to understand how, how you're presented or you understand yourself better and then how you're presenting yourself in the world. And you're able to like bring your level so you're able to make it a relationable thing. Mm. You know, instead of something, someone having to win or lose, it's more like you're willing to meet them and you understand that there's no winning and losing. It's just like, you know, uh, you like Hillary and I like Trump and we're never going to get on that Anyways, and it's, it's just things like that. So anyways, um, I took that a long time ago, and, uh, you know, I think with where I'm at with everything, I think that it's good when you spend the time and get to know yourself and invest, in, you know, I guess building some images around people and seeing something I get to test every day mm -hmm. because for me reaching out I was not if you look at those person those are like the person that's the wallflower they're very quiet they're very analytical they don't they would rather sit in their closet than go sit in the industry because it's just terrifying right. and so, you know those people are analytical but it doesn't mean that they don't like to be in public they they maybe really love people, but they're just trying to understand certain things and, you know, they're perceiving things different. For me growing up, I wanted to be very outgoing and, you know, have great little friend groups and stuff like that. But what I was doing is I was like, man, like, how, how do I do this in a bigger way? How do I make it more fun? How do I make it valuable, mm -hmm. right? Someone that's fun and someone that's smart, but also like valuable or, you know, like, right. So I can't think of a person at the moment, but, and so in, in me reaching out, it's really hard to get started for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. you know, once you, uh, it makes that reaching out a lot easier. Mm -hmm. And, you know, do you feel like David Brooke did the outreach and I, you know, we sat down seven years ago and said, hey, let's build a, a website, a YouTube channel and do the social media thing right. to have right. a more consistent daily, weekly, monthly outreach. And you're going to build these communities around gratitude, man. Mm -hmm. Hashtag gratitude. At the gratitude guy. That gratitude guy is going to be a, a family brand name. Right. Whether it's 2016, 19, or 26, it's going to be there. Mm -hmm. I've done the homework. You have reached out. When we met, you did not do that as much as you do today. Right, true. true. I do it times 100 from what I used to. I was really afraid. Yeah. I would say for people, use social media. Build something like a website or build something that you're able to stand behind as a foundation, whether that's a Facebook page or a business page or a group. Right. Or Page, like you and I have created and really built and mastered. Mm -hmm. You know, we're able to monetize that. Every day I make, I can't tell you how much money off that thing. So it's who I know and what I'm able to leverage off those connections today. If I don't go and do the outreach, I will never have these connections to have fun with, to build friends and relationships, to build a business with, to get paid with, and to continue my other ideas that I may come up with down the road. Right. So it's huge it's everything right now but i was not the person was the last person that would want to do it mm. i put myself into positions every day to scare myself honestly yeah but when i go into a room seven years ago when i met you i would go to a chamber of commerce david and i would look in a room of 50 people and i'd pick out seven people that intimidate me the most mm. they dress the nicest they look the most richest or whatever the fuck they were presenting themselves as energetically mm -hmm. I, would, excuse my language, I would go up and meet them and those were the people that i was networking with wow that's so cool you came up to bellingham i said i did and i probably told you that i'm gonna go do this today right i remember I 
shirt tucked in and his underwear is halfway up his back. Right? Like I, I go and talk to the people who intimidate me. That may or may not fit me. I may be able to help them. I, you know, I'm down and I may be able to offer something and I'm like, oh, crazy story down the road later. Or maybe he helps me in some way. He yeah. does stepped out of my comfort zone and built this outreach system for myself whether you're a wolf that's so cool so that's my advice for people good i'm gonna um i want to uh, honor our time so i'm just going to take a minute or two then we're going to wrap up for this week so i like to keep our uh, michael and david shows at about 30 minutes uh, give or take and the main thing I'm is because next week I'm going to talk about writing a book. This is kind of on my mind because of this manuscript thing this week. Um, and, but for this week, I just want to mention for those people that are interested in furthering their knowledge to get it out to other people, I'm just a huge fan of this Kajabi platform. And it's really great for putting in your courses. It's video, it's audio, it's, it's text, it's bullet point, it's pictures, whatever. So if you have something, I just want to put an endorsement. I'm not getting paid or anything from them, but I just want to put an endorsement in for Kajabi because it's totally from start to finish, all the way from the website to the product, to the, the landing page, to the offer page, down to uh, how to get the, the information out to your people that you're going to want to know about so they can sign on, log on. It's one of the greatest passive income type opportunities you can have that you're asleep and somebody's paying you to view your course at, mm -hmm. at uh, three in the morning or what have you. So that's, mm -hmm. uh, that's really my tip for this week is just really, if you're interested and you have information you want to get out to other people, you can do it through speaking, you can do it through books, you can do all sorts of things with an online course is a great way to go. So, mm -hmm. and uh, as I mentioned, we're going to, we'll get wrapped up here and, and um, next week I am going to talk about a book just because it's on my mind. For those of you that want to do a book, I just mentioned an online course, but if you want to take the knowledge that you have and you want to get disseminated to other people, spread the knowledge, make some money doing it, help other people, whatever your motives may be, um, certainly writing a book is another great way to, and I've got some ideas which I'll pass on next week. And what would you like to uh, uh, talk to next week uh, about to the folks uh, next week? Um, monetizing those connections that you've reached out to. That's excellent. Monetizing the connections. Excellent. So next week I'll be talking about writing a book. Michael will be talking about monetizing the connections that he mentioned earlier. So, well, thank you everybody for tuning in. Michael, thank you. Always good to chat with you and uh, love the backdrop. It's a little intimidating. Mine's kind of boring compared to yours. So, um, that's okay. I'll see I'm going to no, no. try and keep moving and do, I have all sorts of places I can move. So I'll try some different ones here. Okay, soon. Well, I'll try to get something with a little more pizzazz. So uh, thank you everybody. We will talk to you next week. Take care. Yeah. Take care, Michael. Okay.